Hello everyone, I am Associate Professor Dr. Umarani Sinia from the Department of Crop Science, Faculty of Agriculture, University Putra, Malaysia. Today, I would like to discuss with you all on the topic genetic resources in agriculture. First, let us define genetic resources. Now, genetic resources is defined as any plant material, animal, microbial or any living organism containing functional units of heredity. Now, these functional units of heredity allow them to reproduce and therefore they are renewable. There is another terminology which is known to all of you which is very much related to genetic resources which is biodiversity. Now biodiversity or biological diversity simply means the degree of variation among living organism. Right? In other words, they mean the variety of species within a specific area. Humans exploit the presence of animal, plants, microbes, fungi by rearing and cultivating them for the purpose of production of food, fiber, medicine and other products in order to sustain human life. This activity and process of rearing and cultivation is what we call as agriculture. In order to sustain agriculture or an agriculture production system, farmers use domesticated type which originate from the wild type. Now, I have introduced two terminologies in my last sentence which is domesticated and wild. Now, what do these terms mean? Now, a domesticated species is defined as a species in which the evolutionary process has been influenced by humans to meet their needs. These species are bred and raised under human control for many generations and are substantially altered as a group in appearance or behavior. Remember, domesticated species are those that have undergone many generations whereby their appearance and behavior has been altered substantially due to human intervention. Of course, why do humans intervene? This is because we need these products for the purpose of food production, for production of commodities such as wool, cotton, silk, animals to do work for transportation, for protection, for farming, for scientific research or simply to enjoy either as companions or for aesthetic value such as in ornamentals. Now having explained what is the meaning of domesticated, the wild type is just the exact opposite. These species experience their full life cycle without deliberate human intervention. Meaning to say, they grow in the wild on their own and go through generation through natural means. Having explained to you the term domesticated and wild type, let us now look at an example of domestication. The earliest human attempts at plant domestication occurred in Asia with a type of cereal grain called rye. 
Similarly, wheat, another type of cereal grain familiar to most of y'all, have also undergone domestication. Now, while wheat existed about 12,000 years ago, a distinct characteristic of beet rye or wheat is shattering. Now, what is shattering? Shattering simply means at maturity, the grains drop off naturally from the main axis. This is a mechanism of dispersal and of course, it is of benefit to the wild type. However, to human, this is a useless trait because we will then be unable to collect the grains and use it as food. Therefore, the domesticated types have been bred or have been selected for larger grain quality as well as for non-shattering traits. There are many other examples of domestication. I am sure you all can look for other examples. I hope it is now clear to all of you the relationship between agriculture and genetic resources. Agriculture is dependent on the genetic resources from the biological diversity that is present out there. Let us now move on to another topic which is also related to the topic of our discussion which is a genetic resources in agriculture. Now, centre of origin and centre of diversity. What is a centre of origin? And what is a centre of diversity? Are they the same or do they differ? Now, the centre of diversity of a plant is defined as the geographical area wherein the plant exhibits the highest degree of variation. Meaning to say, there are a large number of variation of a particular species in that area. Now, the centre of origin of a plant is defined as the geographical area where a plant species, either domesticated or wild, first developed its distinctive properties. Right? One look, you can see that centre of origin is similar to centre of diversity. Logically, a centre of origin is the place where the plant developed its distinctive properties and therefore, naturally, it would undergo crossing, breeding, mutation, so on and so forth and therefore establishes diversity in that area. Hence, centre of origin similar to centre of diversity. However, occasionally, a crop can be removed from its centre of origin and established elsewhere. Therefore, the diversity will be established in a new area and in that case, you will see that the centre of origin differs from centre of diversity.